Hello, good morning, everyone. So hello, good morning, everyone. Again, I am, we are very happy that you're joining us today for the EABD thesis and dissertation writing seminar. My name is Mavi Alas, and I am in charge of the events and engagement unit of ERBT. It is my pleasure and my honor to introduce to you our host and moderator for today. So our moderator this seminar is All right, so our moderator for the seminar is Dr. Lawrence Bellio, an associate professor at De La Salle University. And our master's of ceremony is Dr. Ramon Christian Isabio, an associate professor at in the, the University of the Philippines, Espanas. Dr. Isabio? Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Mif. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the 2022 ERDT uh, Thesis and Dissertation Writing Seminar. I am Dr. Ramon Christian P. Eusebio, an Associate Professor at the Department of Chemical Engineering, UPLB, and I will be your host for today's event. This seminar aims to provide our students the guidelines and tips on how to properly write your manuscript. This event is also an avenue to gain more knowledge on how to manage the stress experience during writing and presentation of your thesis dissertation. So to formally start our program, may I call on the program leader of ERDT, Professor Ferdinand G. Manigdig. To Department of Science and Technology Secretary, Honorable Portonato de la Peña, and uh, DOST officials, to our guest speakers, De La Salle University Associate Professor John Frederick Tapia, University of the Philippines Los Baños Associate Professor May Joan Aguila, University of the Philippines, Diliman College of Mass Communication, Dean Fernando Paragas, De La Salle University Associate Professor Lawrence Bello, Mapua University Faculty, Dr. Persia Ada De Hiro, Brown University Humanitarian Field Program Fellow, Dr. Jonah Bakilas, University of the Philippines, Diliman, Professor Violeta Bautista, ERDT UP Diliman Project Leader, Professor Gerald Joe Denoga, and ERDT Project Leaders and Project Coordinators. To our host for today's event, Dr. Ramon Christian Eusebio. To officials, faculty members, researchers, and staff from consortium universities and to participants from various colleges and universities and other fields. A pleasant day to all. I am honored to welcome everyone to the virtual thesis dissertation writing seminar hosted by the Engineering Research and Development for Technology. The organization's objective to deliver high-impact research is aligned with the country's national science and technology plan and the medium term development plan. Thesis writing could be one of the most dreaded experiences in a student's academic life. This could involve sleepless nights, countless cups of coffee, and hours of writing and editing a manuscript. While all of this may come into fruition, you may also find that writing your thesis 
could be an exciting experience because this culminates the knowledge and the skills you learn after years of study. You are contributing new knowledge in your chosen field. This is your hard work coming full circle with institutions that help forge your competencies. While your programs have thesis and dissertation writing courses, and you may already be familiar with the structure and processes, this seminar focuses on specific aspects such as organizing information and literature review. Thesis writing intends to communicate the new knowledge we obtain and explain the processes used to produce the results. We write the document procedures for replication and sustainability. Hence, rhetoric styles may differ based on the requirements of our disciplines. For instance, thesis writing in engineering involves explaining technical topics and complex processes. Our findings are presented in a way that matches the requirements of our study, albeit thesis writing in general also incorporates a standard structure with an introduction, statement of the problem, research questions, significance of the study, theoretical framework, methods use, scope and limitation, analysis, discussion, conclusions, and recommendations. Not only will you determine your objectives in your thesis, but you will also gather and evaluate information, synthesize findings, and generate new knowledge that you will communicate to the academe and other stakeholders. Perhaps you may already know the difference between thesis writing and other forms of academic writing. For your undergraduate studies, I am sure you are familiar with the growing task of thesis writing. However, writing your graduate thesis may be more challenging because you establish your needs in the field. It is not easy to compress complex ideas using words. The more you need to explain briefly but concisely, the more complicated writing could get. As a form of academic writing, thesis and dissertation writing are intended to explain and defend a scientific idea. In this seminar, you will learn to proceed more smoothly in crucial portions of your thesis and dissertation, planning and structuring, literature review, referencing, organizing chapters, and the PEMS presentation. This activity will also help you avoid plagiarism and forms of academic dishonesty. The scholarly excellence is a must for graduate researchers, primarily from ERDT consortium universities, since research and development are our priorities. For this reason, we provide various opportunities to help you become more proficient in thesis and dissertation writing. You could immerse yourself more regularly in research work in your future careers. Thesis writing is a foundational skill. Your experience as a graduate researcher is a training ground for the more considerable challenges ahead. I hope this seminar could help in making engineering and scientific research for you not only smarter, but also enjoyable. You may also develop other skills in thesis and dissertation writing, such as excellent reading comprehension, analytical skills, time management, and attention to detail. In reviewing the literature to support your ideas, you are expected to understand text faster and to deduce information more accurately. Separating facts from opinions and using the information gathered from literature to help explain your ideas is also a product of depending your hypothesis. You will learn to produce outputs based on the time frame for the period in writing your thesis is limited. Attention to detail is an attribute every researcher must also possess. 
This enables you to do things more efficiently and accurately. As a researcher myself, I can tell you that writing a research paper is no walk in the park. You need good old-fashioned hard work and perseverance to cross the finish line. Hence, you must be passionate about the topic of your research. This will keep you going when the going gets the roughest and enable you to stay focused. I invite our participants to maximize the presence of our esteemed guest speakers. Many thanks to the project leaders and coordinators of BRDT for organizing this event and to DOST for the unwavering support in engineering research and development. I also wish to express my deepest gratitude to our esteemed guest speakers who will be imparting their knowledge today. May this event be meaningful and enjoyable for all. Once again, welcome to the virtual thesis dissertation writing seminar hosted by the Engineering Research and Development for Technology. Maraming salamat at mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Manigdek, for your welcome message, uh, sharing the overview of the importance of the proper writing of thesis or dissertation. Now, let me introduce our first speaker. Dr. John Frederick D. Tapia is an associate professor in the Chemical Engineering Department of De La Salle University, Manila, Philippines. He's a graduate of PhD in Chemical Engineering at De La Salle University, Manila, and was a, a postdoctoral research associate in University of Bath from April 2018 to October 2019. He is an ERDT scholar from 2012 to 2017. As an early career researcher, his research interests include process system engineering or PSE of low carbon energy systems, mathematical modeling of biomass value chains, specifically oil palm value chain and geographical information system or GIS based analysis of sustain, uh, suitable lands for oil palm. Currently, he published 32 Scopus Index articles on this topic, including pioneering research in the ap application of neutrosophic sets in process synthesis and in data envelopment analysis. His current age index is 11, Let's all welcome our first speaker who will be talking about the planning and structuring the thesis or dissertation, Dr. John Frederick Tapia. Thank you very much, RC, for that um, introduction. Let me just share my screen uh, for my presentation. Uh, can you see my presentation now? Yes, Fred, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's it's really a pleasure for me to um to present in this um in this event because I I was an ERDT scholar uh, in my MS and in my PhD programs back in two thousand twelve for my MS and then for my PhD on uh in two thousand fourteen. So what I'm going to talk about today is about planning and structuring the uh, the thesis and dissertation, and um the way I would present it's more of there's a component wherein um, uh, planning, there's a com planning component and then the structuring component uh, later on. So to give you a short outline of my presentation, uh, I would present the research in general. So what, uh, why do we do research and then a bit of um, how research is, uh, what are the expectations of uh, doing research in, uh, in the MS and in the, and in the PhD program. Next is I will, I will try to differentiate um, thesis and dissertation in a manner where uh, we uh, we know uh, in in a in a context of our of our um, educational system of of uh, how we adapt uh, the definition of thesis and dissertation and then the next part is about planning the research study which would include about the topic um, um, your relationship with your mentor etc and then uh, the structuring of manuscript and or or the document um, in terms of how I perceive each chapter should should be about, and then some other writing styles that would improve your um, your manuscript, and then a, uh, a summary of what I uh, will talk about today. 
So technically, um, the research process or uh, we do research because we we want to contribute something to not not just to our society but also to uh, the knowledge bank. Um, in in which uh, we want to make our um our primary goal is to make. Um, our lives um, easier. To, we want to improve our lives. We want to have a sustainable future, etc. So um, we do research in a way that um, um, it would be applicable to the society, industry, or the government. And then um, um, a part of it, let's say, for the government, um, gives us funding to do research. On the other hand, some of uh, some of the researchers, especially on the field of mathematics or Um, in the field of mathematics or physics, um, what their uh, aim is to produce or to contribute to the knowledge bank, wherein um, it it will have an indirect impact to the, uh, to the it will have an indirect impact in which um, through the knowledge bank um, the society can pull something from it and use it when whenever the need arises. So our approach as a researcher is to just produce. Um, uh, Um, knowledge, or we want to produce research that would contribute, maybe not um, today, but later on in uh, or in the future. So when we uh, perform research in the graduate level, um, it is expected that in the master's program you would uh, end up having a set of research-related skills, um, in which you can do something on, on an individual level. So you should display a research capability as an individual after you finish your master's program. And with that, it's more about proficiency and skill. Whereas in the PhD program, it's it's about um, expertise. So when you graduate, uh, you, when you get your doctor uh, title in your name, um, it, 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 um, it means that you have uh, a certain um, level of expertise on a particular topic, especially the one um, in your the one that you did in your PhD program. So one of my mentor actually um, mentioned that my primary goal as a PhD student back then is to be better than uh, better than him in one particular aspect. And that aspect is something that um, I I do or or I did in my PhD uh, program. So um, to demonstrate our these capabilities or to uh, to meet this expectation as a uh, as a graduate student, we we create what or we develop what we call thesis and dissertation. So um, a thesis is um, a documentation of the research work in which we display or we we uh, we contribute with some degree of novelty. So. It may not be something that oh, we propose a a uh, a one uh, one uh, one fits all solution to the problem of say um, uh, climate change, but it it has some contribution to the uh, to the body of knowledge that allows us to solve the, the problem of climate change. While in the dissertation, it's more about um, a collection of research work leading to a project of um, Or a regional research project. So um, this or this definition in um, in this definition is um, um, of thesis and dissertation is based on the uh, the context of uh, how we learn it uh, based on uh, U.S. education. So um, the thesis and dissertation actually has a different definition in the British system, but We all know both thesis and dissertation are two um, approaches wherein we demonstrate our research capabilities. And so um, we plan or we, we do our research. And one of the most important things when we uh, perform our, uh, when we plan our research is to is about the topic and the mentor. So the role of the mentor actually is to provide us with um, sufficient guidance so that we will uh, we can work on our own. And our role, actually, or the the one, uh, uh, the something that the mentor expects us is, uh, we give them updates or we we keep them updated as, as to what um, uh, our progress is. Now, um, the uh, usually a student when they enter the um, the MS program and they want to try to they want to explore a. 
a certain topic or a certain um, study, we usually uh, think of something in general. Like for example, when I enter my uh, when I, I enter the MS program, I think of okay, I do I want to make I want to do research on um, on carbon capture and storage or in the technology of carbon capture and storage. And then, okay, I, I think I, I want to do optimization. So it's more, it's a, it's a general, um, um, it's a bit general, um, it's a bit of general topic that I think of. Now, your mentor actually uh, would uh, refine that topic or it would develop that topic to an extent where, uh, to an extent that um, requires for, uh, that is required for your program. So your mentor would say, uh, okay, you do, um, you you read this um, papers uh, then try to come up with some considerations for the optimization model so that's um, how that's one of the examples that your mentor will try to develop your um, your topic so you give your your mentor guide you then you you as as the mentee will provide uh, some updates to your mentor and a good mentor mentee relationship um, is one of the key uh, um, it's one of the key to a successful um, graduate study. Now, okay, so you have the topic, you have, you have chosen a mentor. So you want to study about your topic. And uh, planning your study involves preliminary readings. One of the most useful um, paper that I, um, that I can say, uh, uh, one of the most useful paper when studying your specific, a specific topic is the review paper. Not only the review paper contains the past studies, it also contains some background information that may be useful for you to start on the background of your study. And it also contains some of the future direction that you might um, want to explore uh, as part of your MS or your PhD topic. And of course, some, it will lead you to more readings. So the past studies that a review paper contains can help you into uh, diving into specific papers and learn some new methods that these specific pa papers um, um, proposes or uh, used. Now, um, the study contains um, two kinds of, or the study usually, especially in the MS and the PhD program, in the LSL University has two phases. One is to demonstrate your planning skills in research through a proposal document. And another is to demonstrate your uh, research skill through analysis of uh, data or through um, interpretation and coming up with new knowledge um, in the form of the final manuscript. For your proposal, it's more of demonstration of um, how well do you know what you will do on in the future. So you must know how the, uh, the topic well. Uh, you must know how uh, or how will you do uh, your research and know how will how long will it take um, to achieve your objectives. But of course, not everything goes according to plan. So um, let's make um, everything re as realistic as possible. Say in uh, the MS program, it usually takes um, two terms or around uh, um, uh, 28 uh, weeks, 30 week, 28 to 30 weeks to pursue a um, a thesis. So you might want to consider just doing something around that time. Frame. Now, um, the final manuscript is an ex is technically an extension of the document of, uh, for, of your proposal document in a way that you just change your proposal into something more of a um a past tense. Now, the ma the final manuscript. Your objective is to demonstrate your research skill through analysis of the results you generated and to um, document or to explain how it will be uh, of a contribution to the body of knowledge in your field. And then it would, um, um, the important thing, or for me, one of the important uh, aspects that uh, a good thesis or research, whether it's undergraduate, MS, or a PhD, is, to, is how you discuss the impact of your research to the society indirectly or directly how would the results how would the uh, the method be of any use uh, or of any impact to the uh, society now maybe of talking about the the research in your final manuscript it's about uh, more of a sales talk sales talk 
when you you uh, you somehow um, promote a specific product and that's your research, but you only base it on facts or in in uh, on facts or on a level that is not uh, too exaggerated and not to ano um uh, not to um uh, not to treat it with very low um very lowly. So. Th- So now, um, once you have the your plan, you, once you know that you will be doing your proposal, your manuscript, uh, your final manuscript, you have your mentor, you prefer you do your pre- you do your preliminary reading. So the next step is actually how to structure it, and I would always start with something wherein you have um, um, you have the key concepts that you want to incorporate to your research work. Of course, you would start in some general problem of, uh, let's say, climate change. And then you want to narrow down to specific aspect of climate change, whether it's about technologies that would address uh, um, climate change or uh, technologies that would um, capture or that would um, allow us to have a low-carbon future or some aspect of predicting um, the, the state of technologies that we have for Uh, to to solve the problem of climate change, so it's more of a general problem. And then we try to narrow it down um, to the point that you have some uh, you have identified uh, uh, the research gaps that you want to address, uh, and then um, through some theories that you you need to learn and apply, then develop a methodology through these theories, uh, uh, identify some possible impact of your work, a significant point that. has supporting statistics or some problem no one has thought of. So these uh, key concepts are what well, are, are something that you want to have in your um, in research work. But how do you connect this um, kind of uh, or, or this uh, key concepts in your uh, thesis or in your uh, in your dissertation? So you have the following you have the you have the written document and Uh, your university provides you with a style of okay you um you have you need to have the chapter one chapter two chapter three chapter four etc gang uh, chapter six and then you have some specific chapters that um uh, um that um is related to each of the numbers in the chapter especially um chapter one it's about introduction or in um in some disciplines they call this as the problem and its background. Now, one point about um, the the formatting or the writing stance that uh, that we have different disciplines have different uh, have different styles. Um, in in social sciences, I think they have this um, theoretical and conceptual framework. They also have this definition of terms, and they have this uh, research design and other components that. Um, in, in in an engineering um, discipline to that have so we we start with the introduction um in in my field or in, in the chemical engineering we want um to provide the details about the research problem so it's all about the research problem and it answers the questions about what about what uh this is uh, what uh what this the study is all about what are you trying to address in general what are the Uh, the evidences that supports your problem, or what are the, uh, what are the, so what's your thesis is all about? So that's the that's on the chapter one. Now you're going to support your uh, your study with uh, a literature review to answer why is uh, why do we need the study in terms of um, the novelty or the research gap being addressed in your study. Next is about the theoretical framework, which I think some um, disciplines that also have. But in, in chemical engineering, we have this theoretical framework, and it answers how can you how can you um, how can you solve the or how can you meet the objectives? What are the theories that um, is connected to it? And then we have the methodology as um, uh, in which it answers the question how to how to How to do your how to to generate the results? How will you do the research? How do you how to uh, to perform to perform the uh, how to answer the objective? So it's the how to the theoretical framework is to, is the question how can. Now the results and discussion is uh, a documentation of your 
um, of your experimentation, of your simulation and other uh, activities that you do to, to generate the numbers and the results. And one of the things that I want to point out when you write your, uh, your results in discussion is to answer the question, so what? What does so what are these numbers so what uh what it will be the uh, what will the impact of this in the pool of knowledge so so it's it's it answers the question so what and it focuses on meeting the objectives of your study and then we have the conclusions and uh future work which summarizes the whole uh research now uh, the difference of the conclusion and the abstract is that the conclusion contains main um, um contains the highlights so what are the highlights of your study uh, what um uh, how would um how would you answer the objectives in a um, in a very brief manner so that's the conclusion part of your thesis and so once you have these chapters once you have these key concepts you, your thesis or your dissertation will will, some, will look like this you have is some general problem leading to a specific one and so your study would have certain objectives that you want to meet uh well when you finish the uh, the program and then the extent of um the study then you're going to support it with literature to uh, to emphasize the gaps uh, the theories and the method to solve the the problem that you want to or the problem or to meet the objective the objectives of your study and then the, the results to um, to present how it how it will be solved or um or the results that uh, provides the answers to your problem or your objective and then the conclusions and then um to, to emphasize on um uh, some of the um uh, the tips or some of the advice that i want to impart to uh, to graduate students are uh, present in the following slides. So, um, what is the use of prop, uh, the proper use of terminologies? Uh, in which one of, one way of demonstrating your knowledge about your research topic is how you use scientific terms. So, it's about um, uh, differentiating modeling versus optimization versus simulation. And uh, um, one way to um, to have or want to, to enhance your uh, the use of your or the proper use of terminology is through uh, listing a definition of terms. Conceptual being about um, conceptual being about how it is used in, in your field. Operational is how it is used in your study specifically. Now some other writing styles before um, before I summarize my um, my talk is about. It's first about repetition and non-repetition of thoughts. So um, to give you a, a analogy of this, um, for example, you're watching an anime series or you're reading a manga. And of course, there's a story in it. And um, a good, for me, a good a manuscript or a good a series or a good story in a, in a manga is uh, something wherein you can just follow it um, um, in a linear fashion, so there's there's no jumping from one chapter to another or from uh, going back to uh, some previous chapter because you cannot follow the the, uh, the the story. So you might want to repeat some of your thoughts that you were you already mentioned in the manuscript before, and um, so as to have a coherence, so that the readers can follow your. Uh, the, the story of your research work. So you may not want to overdo it so that your your document would not be lengthy. Now, the second point is about chapter overview and summary. Is it advisable or not? Now, it's a great addition to long chapter because it allows you to sandwich or sandwich the thoughts in, in a chapter. So um, in a way that it would be, it would be a standalone um, document. Being an overview gives um uh, gives the um the gives the readers what to expect in the in that chapter and a, a summary to to allow the readers and the author to, to compare the realizations in that chapter. And on figures and tables, it's all about the message. You might want to uh, think what 
you want to present in a figure or at a table what message you want to impart to your readers and decide whether you um, it would be necessary to have it as a table or as a figure. Now, to end my talk, um, to summarize, um, planning your thesis or dissertation is all about going from the big picture to smaller details. The structure is something that you start with the problem and solving the problem at the end. Um, just three C's for the structure of the thesis document. It, would, it must be concise um, in a way that um, the readers won't um, 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 in, in a way that you um, um, it it uh, it's, it's short to capture the the details that you want to impart to your readers. It must be coherent, so it it follows a certain story at the end, and complete the, to capture the important details in uh, in the manuscript. Usually, conciseness or brevity and Completeness of our work is um, is um, has uh, or is somewhat contradicting. Uh, you might want to complete your you might want to have a complete thesis by putting the, um, all or all details that you thought of, but um, it would be the, the the document would be longer. So conciseness is to cut down to the important details. Completeness is to make sure that. Uh, you capture uh, the message that you want to impart to your readers. And lastly, it's about different styles in different disciplines. But these styles are common in terms of applying the scientific method of uh, having um, um, a, a, an evidence-based uh, statements or an evidence-based claims at the end of the manuscript. Uh, and that's all for my talk. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Doc Fred. Okay, so if you have questions, uh, please uh, just uh, uh, reserve that. We will be having uh, the Q and A after uh, the presentation of our speakers. Okay, so let me introduce now uh, our next speaker. So, Doctor May Joan Aguila is an associate professor in the Institute of Chemistry of the University of the Philippines, Las Banos. She obtained her BS Chemistry from UPLB and her MS and PhD degrees in Chemistry from Georgetown University. Dr. Aguila has numerous published papers and two patents under her name. To share with us guidelines on writing the literature review and effective referencing, let's all welcome Dr. May Juan Aguila. So oh, thank you very much for that such introduction. So let me share my slide. Uh, are you able to see my slide now? Yes, okay. Yes, sir. go ahead. So, so as mentioned, I'm uh, May Joan Aguila. I'm an associate professor in the Institute of Chemistry, UPLB. And I thank uh, ERDT for allowing me to share my experience. So basically, not just uh, about uh, eight years ago, I'm also in the same boat as you are, trying to find a way or the momentum to write the uh, uh, dissertation. So basically, most of what I'm going to share with you uh, will be based from my experience. So first off, what is a literature review? So there are uh, two definitions provided. So according to Fink in 2019, so this is actually a systematic. So there's a certain system that we usually follow and then explicit and reproducible method of identifying, evaluating, and synthesizing the existing body of work. So this work comes from researchers, scholars, or practitioners in our field. So this is also a unique opportunity to assess and to contrast the information that is presented to us. So based on the two definitions, a literature review is not just, oh, I got this journal one, I got this journal two, and basically I will just uh, come up with a document that somewhat summarizes what journal one and journal two contains. So a liter literature review is not just simply a summary. It also a venue for us to assess the content of the article. So meron na tayo dong somewhat a 
critical thinking if indeed the content of the article makes sense. Okay. So basically, what is the importance or is literature review important in research? I hope all of us here, especially our scholars, will have the answer to this as yes. So even during our undergraduate years, we know that um, during our proposal stage, during our thesis defense, uh, we were asked to provide uh, some slides about uh, the background, which generally contains a literature review. So it is an important aspect in doing research. So according to Lingard in 2015, this is actually our way of conversing to the other people, to other researchers in our field. So when we read their journal articles, when we uh, try to understand their journal articles, it is their way of telling us what they work on. And it is our way of, of course, uh, trying to somewhat bridge our knowledge of what we know now and then what we will know essentially after reading the paper. So a way of understanding how one research fits into the larger scientific research area or the larger education conversation. So that's how important a literature review is in research. So maybe your next question would be, when do we do? So when should I do my literature review? Is it at the beginning? So Dr. Tapia mentioned about the general steps in making your dissertation or making your thesis is, first off, you have, of course, uh, the outline or the proposal stage, so I call that at the beginning. And then your experimental stage, so that's the middle in our uh, thesis or dissertation uh, journey. And at the end, during the manuscript or final defense stage. Okay, so when do you think we should do our uh, literature review? So if you answer at the beginning, so you are correct. We will do literature review at the beginning. If you answer in the middle of it while doing experimentation, you are also correct. But sometimes when you do experiment, uh, you need to consult if the method that you're doing is correct or if there are similar methods. So you consult the literature for that. At the end, during your manuscript writing, do you also consult the literature? Of course, you also consult the, uh, consult the literature, particularly uh, as Dr. Tapia mentioned, uh, when you try to do your result and discussion. So the result is and discussion should be backed up. Your data, your interpretation of your data should be backed up by what is already in the literature or what has been uh, previously proposed. So the answer to this, when it is actually in the whole cycle, so it is an iteration. So at every stages during your formulation of the research question, during your design of the experiment, when you write your manuscript, when you interpret your results, you should always consult the literature. So as clearly seen in this diagram over here, so all points to literature review. So the research question when you're constructing this, so basically, at this point, uh, you should have two questions that you should be able to answer upon doing your literature review. So this would be um, what has already been done. Right? Just like what Dr. Tapia mentioned, you should know what has already been done about the research topic that you want to focus on. And what, uh, what is there uh, left to do? So. This will be your uh, guiding principle in constructing your research question. And you'll only be able to answer those questions if you have literature review. And basically when you're designing your experiment, your methods. So in particular, just like what I have in an example uh, previously. So for example, your method isn't working as you wish it to be. You can consult the literature. So the literature, tells you about other researchers' experiences. So you might get some idea how to uh, troubleshoot the certain method. 
And of course, uh, during writing the manuscript, as I mentioned, when you write your results and discussion. Okay, so this is our, our way of connecting to the other researchers. So it is an iterative process. It does not end when you have your thesis outline presentation. Based on experience now as a faculty member, as a uh, professor is handling uh, students who are doing this uh, thesis, uh, they seem to have the idea that once you have formulated or you have organized your literature review during the proposal, that's it. So that's also the same literature review that you're going to put in your manuscript. Most of the time it is, but sometimes uh, there are some changes that you need to uh, do. Um, I want to emphasize also in here that remember what you put in your uh, document would be related literature review. So not all literature that you can find uh, will be put in your manuscript. So you need to be able to discern which one is related to what you are basically the general topic and then more specific topic of what you have in your dissertation. So with that, how do we do a uh, literature search? Uh, this is open by uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the stage where sometimes uh, students uh, have the stagnant uh, point. So how to do uh, literature search? Traditionally, well, when I was doing my uh, PhD, uh, I still consult traditional literature. These are the printed versions. So for example, books, encyclopedias, newspapers, magazines, uh, articles, so some conferences, proceedings, or even printed thesis or dissertations. So of course, these are a good way of coming up with your literature review, but there are some drawbacks, and of course, there are also some uh, advantages. Um, one of the advantages, of course, is the ease of use. So if you have the printed version, uh, what you can do, you can actually ask I, I don't know about you, but sometimes for me, I find it uh, easier to read if, if I'm reading it in the printed form. So I don't, uh, I, I don't know if it's psychological or something, but I find it is uh, easier for me to understand if I can uh, highlight. So I have different color highlighters. I, I can highlight the, the some phrases in the, in, in the printed version. Although, um, Many of drawbacks would be it is time consuming, definitely. So where, where do you find this uh, printed version? Usually in the library. So you need to physically be in the library, okay? And then search their catalogs, uh, search for the uh, journal, if it is from the journal and skim through the journal and so on. And most of the time, especially in the Philippine setting, uh, this uh, up-to-date, uh, consideration might be the biggest drawback. So they are not often uh, up to date. So uh, it really um, up to a certain period when we have uh, printed subscription for those uh, traditional literature. So we can also opt to do digital literature search. So of course, this is the digital version. It can be in the form of the eBooks, uh, online journal articles, uh, web pages, also including uh, educational videos and tutorials, uh, virtual lectures, and some conferences actually publish their e-proceedings and e-abstracts. So the beauty of this, uh, you can download if you have subscription, and then you can print it and have it in the printed version. Okay. The ease of use of this would be um, you can just simply type uh, or use the keyword search. So you can tailor the keywords that you are going to use to pinpoint you to certain lists of journals or articles or literature that are related to the keywords that you type in. And uh, since this is a digital version, most of the time, this is really state of the art. So you can, if you go to um, journal web pages, they have this... Uh, 
uh, current issue at the same time um, uh, recently accepted recently accepted journal articles so those are not yet in their uh, issue form but they are already made available for us so it is indeed a uh, state of the art so although those are the advantages uh, especially when I was uh, still uh, getting used to this uh, lit digital literature search, sometimes uh, they have a uh, confusing online platform and sometimes it is really intimidating. So what keyword should I use? Or if I click this, it will go to this site. What will I do next? So uh, practice uh, uh, sometimes uh, doing it more often really uh, makes you more familiar with the online platform. So it's a, it's a doable thing to do this digital literature search. So when we do our literature search, so although I have here some uh, literature types, okay, so what essentially are we going to use in our thesis, in our dissertation? So the type of materials that we are going to use as much as possible should be uh, peer-reviewed materials. So in the peer-reviewed materials, so this is uh, the peer review process. Uh, I'm sorry you were not able to see it quite nicely, but essentially, um, what are these peer-reviewed materials? Uh, they are generally written by experts in a particular field. So these people who submit articles to this certain journal are expert as well in that particular field because uh, they figured out that this is the most suitable journal where they can publish their uh, results. And these are evaluated by experts in the same field. So uh, just an overview of the peer review process generally. So when you have uh, an article submitted, say, to a certain journal, so the journal will um, ask several experts to review the process, uh, to review the paper. So in reviewing, uh, they are going to go about uh, checking the soundness of the objectives. Do the objectives, uh, uh, is the paper uh, presented in such a way the results are, uh, or the results met the objectives. Uh, in the results are interpreted um, correctly and accurately. And then they have, uh, very compelling conclusion, and so on. So these uh, peer review materials uh, generally comes in as research papers. So these are products of research. So that's why it's called research papers. So these are report, first-hand report of research findings. So I believe uh, in... Um, type of literature, this is referred to as the primary type of literature, the first-hand report of research findings. So they can be uh, articles which are generally longer in length, uh, more complete in terms of the sections, or communications, or short notes. So as the name implied, so they are shorter versions of the full article, and uh, they are usually just focus on one uh, certain topic. And compared to the full article, there are several topics that can be found and you can see the interrelation, the connections of the several topics uh, quite nicely. And then there's also distribute papers, which summarizes the research findings from multiple researchers. Okay, so this is highlighted by Professor Tapia earlier. Uh, because review papers are actually quite important. Um, well, the authors already summarized the research finding for us, and it contains, of course, the past um, uh, liter literature. They already worked on that. They summarize it in such a way that they are able to show a comparison, analysis, or maybe they also introduce their own uh, interpretation. Okay, and then they. As Dr. Tapia mentioned, uh, there's this uh, forward-looking uh, statements usually in a review paper. So what they usually uh, wish to um, 
uh, people will find out after after what is already been presented. So research articles and review papers. So these are the ones that we usually put in in our uh, literature literature review for our thesis or for our dissertation. So once we have that, once we know that uh, what type of uh, literature are we going to use, how do we usually, particularly now working on the digital platform, so how are we going to do our uh, literature search? So I have it here, some search engines that we usually use. Okay. Uh, these are uh, my recommendations. And I also asked several colleagues, uh, what are their recommendations? Um, right now, what I'm really uh, using would be the Google Scholar. So this provides a quick access to wide collection of relating materials. Okay. There are also these uh, PubMed. So in the PubMed, the beauty of this is that um, you'll be able to get hold of the copy of the article itself. Uh, based on my experience, but this is quite limited in areas of biomedical and life sciences, which is quite tricky because, for example, for me, I'm uh, working on catalysis, so that's a little bit hard to really connect it to biomedical or life sciences. And then uh, Scopus uh, Web of Science and SciFinder, they usually have abstract and citation database, and uh, it's quite um, uh, robust in the sense that uh, it contains scientific, technical, and medical content. Uh, when I was a PhD student, I find it useful to use the SciFinder because it has also the reaction database. So in the reaction database, you just basically uh, draw uh, the structure of, say, your reactant, and then the product, and then you click there, that, that's the reaction, and then it will give you uh, literature that somewhat cite, uh, uses that same reaction or related to that reaction. Unfortunately, uh, Scopus, uh, Web of Science, and SciFinder, I think, are uh, subscription-based. And I'm not certain if UP has subscription for this. Uh, Scopus, maybe we have subscription. So that's why, as I mentioned, I right now I'm really using a Google Scholar. All the others are actually recommendation from a colleague who is working in cancer research and as such. So more of a biomedical, so such as the National Center for Biotechnology Information or NCBI, and then Education Research Information Center or ERIC, uh, Cumulative Index of Nursing and Allied Field or Psych-Info. Uh, um, there are also several others uh, depending on your field of interest. Um, I regret that I was not able to list down here the ones that UPLB is using, particularly for agriculture and veterinary medicine uh, related. I think we have a database for that, but I'm sorry I was not able to put it here, but you can search that so in our uh, website library, uh, the library website. Okay, so you could also try it put in here, but with a grain of salt. Okay, uh, YouTube, particularly if we're more fond of uh, learning based on videos or de demo videos or short animations. But uh, usually this is for a general topic concepts. If you really want to be more specific, I suggest to use a Google Scholar or some of these uh, uh, search engines that we have. Uh, in fact, I've, I'm highlighting this uh, Google Scholar. So let me uh, work on this. So I think you know this. So the Google Scholar, it provides insight of the influence of journals in the scientific community. So you mga age index and so. So paper in, uh, papers are sorted for a particular timeline or more refined search, you can do that. So you can have it in a certain timeline. So it also includes uh, important vocabulary and jargons that you might encounter in the field. So it is uh, always uh, nice to be familiar, particularly with the jargons. 
And then it also helped us in uh, doing the citation for the reading materials. So um, Google Scholar, it searches repositories of publishers, universities, and scholarly websites. It's a little bit smaller in subset as compared to Scopus or Web of Science. So that's why Scopus and Web of Science is still the best ones, but these are subscription-based. So if you want to go around with a subscription, you can go with Google Scholar. And then um, this is just some, if you go to that, so this is how it will look like. So first off, this is the uh, uh, main preface, uh, main interface of it. And then I, I search for hydrogenation of esters, so it gives me this. So you can do filters such as uh, this timeline or date or any type or even include patents and so on. And um, over here, if you have um, this, basically the first two lines contains the title, the authors, and the, uh, so this is the main bibliographic entry. So the journal, the title of the article, authors. And then this on the right side, this is where you have a quick access for that, full text quick access in what form and in this website. So here, for example, this is available in the ACS uh, website as a PDF version. And then cited by, sometimes this is uh, uh, considered because uh, if it's cited by a lot of people, uh, it means that it has value. So what is in that, um, in that uh, article, it really has value. And then if you click this uh, quotation mark, it will give you this which is the different way of how to cite it in different format, MLA, APA. So depending on what your institute is uh, using or is recommending. Okay. So another thing that I want you to get familiar of. So here in UPLB for uh, MS students, for PhD students, so graduate students generally when they submit their proposal, the, our Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension, they require them to do a prior art search. When we, when we say prior art search, this is generally patent search. So you can also do this using the Google form, uh, sorry, the Google Scholar, as I mentioned. But in my experience, I usually use eSpaceNet and the WIPO um, website. So eSpaceNet is basically a free online service for searching patents and patent applications. And then the WIPO, so this is global database of the intellectual property. Also based on experience, I'm really using eSpaceNet uh, more often than WIPO. Uh, I find it easier to navigate through, the, um, through their um, uh, interface. Okay, so I have here on the next slide the... Uh, how it looks like. So basically this is when you go to eSpaceNet and then uh, you Google it, you just click the uh, whatever this uh, website is and then put in your keyword. And then the keyword that I wrote, I think is hydrogenation of esters. And this is the ones that, the, that it, give, uh, it gave me. So you can refine it further, uh, advanced search or filters. So, but uh, you need, to get more familiar with citing patents as well, okay? Uh, particularly uh, in UPLB, uh, we, we wanted to um, identify if there will be patentable information that can be derived from the research and if it is related already to what has been uh, in patent in a certain path. So that's why we do this prior art search, okay? So, now that we have our literature review, uh, sorry, those collection of literature. So during our undergrad, maybe you only have 50 literature, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to scare you, but when I was doing my PhD work, I think I have like a uh, hundred or so uh, literature that I need to like organize. And how do we organize that? That's quite a lot of, uh, quite a number already of um, literature. So what we're gonna do, and what I will suggest to you would be to 
get hold of a citation manager. So EndNote, RefWorks, Papers, Mendeley, or Sotero. These are the more uh, popular ones. Um, the first three are fee-based. So there's a subscription for this. Okay, so you should check your li librarian if uh, your institution has one. So the university where I did my PhD work actually has a subscription with EndNote. So I, I use this uh, for my PhD work. So I'm more familiar with this. So this is how uh, EndNote works. So the beauty of this is uh, the references can be automatically imported from the EndNote to the MS Word if you're using MS Word. So this is uh, what we call as the site as you write. So site as you write. So if you have already your list of um, literature uh, collected in the EndNote as a citation manager, all you need to do is uh, copy that and then paste it in your um, a working document. And then later on, you can uh, do something with it. I forgot the term. And then it will come up with the list. Okay, with the list of the literature and depending on what a citation format are you using, it can give you as a square bracket such as this square bracket number or superscript or so on. So that's the beauty of this. So you can cite as you write. And then uh, I have here uh, how it looks like. So this is uh, how it looks like. So this is a uh, one uh, EndNote file. So you have all the materials that you have put in here. So this is your uh, input file over here. So you just need to click that to add another reference. And then this is the detail. This uh, part would be the detail of what is in that uh, reference. And then a control panel layout if you just wanted to change how it appears to you. And I think what is uh, important for me back then is this uh, add uh, PDF file. So if I have a copy of that reference, I'm adding it into this uh, EndNote so that it's already in one site or in one quote unquote folder that when I open it up, I already know where my uh, PDF copy is. And I think that you can also share this with, uh, with your colleagues or with someone else, okay? And they can also open it and build it up as you go, particularly if you're working with a similar topics. Uh, EndNote uh, has a, uh, an application that you can download and install in your computer. And they also have a website base. I think the website base is free, but it might be limited in terms of the number of references that you can actually store in it. And at the same time, of course, since it's website-based, you need to have or you need to be online to be able to access it. Okay, so over here is just a, an illustration of how easy it is actually to gather a citation for uh, using EndNote or any other of the uh, citation manager. So um, certain uh, journal actually already or allows you to export the citation format. So this is in the Journal of American Chemical Society. If you click this part, so it says in here, originally the letters here says I R I S. So click that and then you can download citation or if you want citation with abstract and so on. But usually since I attach the PDF, I only need the citation and it will download. And then you can open that in EndNote and voila, it is already in this format. Okay, you don't need to manually type it. So that's what I'm trying to hit on here. So you don't need to manually type it. That's going to be cumbersome if you have a hundred or so literature. And then I have it here, uh, a website that can uh, guide you in how to use N. All right, so I think that's the main gist of the uh, things that I wanna say. And for this next slide, I just want to have, or to share with you, a personal uh, tricks of the trades that I learned. So first off, uh, make it a habit to read a literature. So read as many research articles as you can. So please uh, do not uh, 
For example, because you need to submit your outline by next week, you're going to cram up uh, reading 100 articles this week. Uh, that's going to be tiring to your mind. Okay, so uh, make it a habit. Uh, when I was an under, uh, undergrad, when I was a graduate student, uh, we usually read uh, one journal article a day. Uh, my field of research is in organometallic catalysis, and there are several uh, journal articles dedicated for this. So we try to have uh, one article from this journal and then another article for that journal and so on. So that's going to be a lot of articles. So my suggestion is read the abstract first, of course, the title, the abstract, if it's really interesting and related to what you wanted to work on. And as Dr. Tapia mentioned, I strongly agree that you read the review articles. Uh, actually, for me, that's the ones that I usually download first and then read it quite thoroughly. And it helps me identify what other primary sources, the journal articles or research papers that I will read on further. Okay, so um, make sure to read uh, papers that are related to your topic. So this is not limited in number, nor it is limited in the period, okay? Um, uh, in a certain similar uh, seminar, somebody asked that uh, they are required to just uh, have a review of uh, from say 2000 and so on. So, for the purpose of your dissertation or literate or um, thesis, I think it's better to uh, look for articles, especially the ones that report the seminal work, the initial work related to your topic. Okay. So, so that you can see the progression of the, um, the research that has been done for that certain topic. Okay, so be flexible, particularly this is in part of when you're doing already experimentation, you're consulting the literature, things did not go as what the literature presented or reported. Uh, that's actually very, uh, that's a dismay, but be flexible and uh, prepare to do some troubleshooting about it. Uh, be collaborative, so consult with uh, experienced people. So this is experienced people. So your um, advisor or member of the advisory committee, they may have uh, recommendations for you to read on further with respect to the topic and to your peer. Okay? Your peer, especially if you're working on with the same or similar topics, or sometimes really your peer can have a different interpretation of what is listed in the Article, so it's also it's always nice to know those uh, information. So, and then be organized. So, particularly if you're gonna have a hundred or so a literature, uh, making a citation manager is one way to organize it. But what is in this article, you need also to make a summary of that. So. Um, I remember in my undergrad, I was doing the note cards. So I have this index card where I wrote the, what is in the said article, okay? But since I evolved already, so I, I have been more uh, using uh, technological advances. So I'm using uh, PowerPoint. I like to use PowerPoint because uh, in this organization, I just, uh, well, I just uh, cut and paste the title, the authors and sometimes the abstract and some pertinent, some illustration. And then I just type in my interpretation of it. Okay, so it is, uh, I, I think your advisors are not expecting you to really memorize the content of that 100 or so literature. But if you have this sort of way organization of what is the content of your, um, of the literature that you read, so it's easier for you to recall. So eventually, it's easier for you to really uh, work on your literature review. All right. So with that, I wanted to end with uh, this. So these are the uh, references that I use. Okay? And I would like to especially thank uh, Dr. Averil, uh, Janice Averilia of the Philippine Science Hub 
uh, who uh, lent me uh, some ideas about how to do this uh, presentation. And I also would like to invite you to check philsaihub.com. We have a similar uh, content in terms of seminar, uh, but that is tailored more for undergraduate, but you might also find some, uh, you might find them useful as well because we outline it from uh, research, cons uh, research topic construction, identifying the topic to uh, thesis presentation or presentation in, um, in a in the conferences so thank you very much so i entertain questions or uh, during the uh, i am available for questions that you might thank you thank you thank you very much um thank you very much dr aguila for a very informative presentation okay we will be having a 10 minute break uh, for those who are interested in receiving a certificate of attendance, please accomplish the Google form that will be sent in the chat box. The Google form requires an attachment of the screenshot from the morning and afternoon sessions as proof of your attendance. Again, the link for the Google form will be sent in the chat box and you need to, at to attach a screenshot as a proof of, a of attendance, both for morning and afternoon sessions. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, let me just adjust the setting of the Google Forms. Thank you. Okay, good morning again to everyone. So we will cut our our break short and uh, I saw a lot of questions uh, and uh, we are fixing okay uh, the, uh, the G form the Google form so some of you said that uh, the, uh, the Google form is not accepting responses so we will fix it and then we will send it again to our um, chat box okay so now we will proceed uh, to our last speaker in today's morning session Okay, we have Dr. Fernando Paragas. 
Dr. Paradas is the Dean of the University of the Philippines College of Mass Communication, UPCMC, CMC, and a professor at its Department of Communication Research. He is the president of the Philippine Association for Communication and Media Research Incorporated and the convenor of the Program on Higher Education Research and Policy Reform at the UP Center for Integrative Development Studies. Dr. Paragas has a cumulative total of over 100 academic publications, competitive conference papers, commission studies, and invited presentations. In 2019, he received the Gawad Chancellor sa, nag, sa Natatanging Guro, the highest award bestowed by UP Diliman on its faculty members. In 2020, he was named as the CMC Outstanding Senior Faculty Member. Our last speaker for today's morning session, let's all welcome Dr. Fernando Paragas. Hi, everyone. Good morning, and thank you, Dr. Eusebio. And uh, my screen is blank because and that's the start of my presentation. Ano? Uh, sometimes we wonder, bakit kaya marami nagmamagaling sa internet? Ano? Or sa social media, marami expert. Uh, parang ganyan yung tanong. Ano? And then now, we use research to answer that question. So actually, meron namang sagot na. At ito, ginawa through a survey. Uh, ang tanong nga, uh, people were asked no, about six important general uh, knowledge questions. And then, the uh, Philippines ranked in the third position. Sa least accurate. So, dun sa anim na sagot na yun, uh, anim na tanong, uh, medyo mali yung mga sagot ng mga Pilipino. And then, kadutong ng survey, yung, ay, uh, yung second question. Wait. Ang panglawag tanong ay, uh, yung confidence level, how confident are people about their answers? Lumabas din, pangatlo din tayo sa panaka-confident. So, kumbaga, based on this study, uh, Filipinos were not very competent but were quite confident. So, paano nangyayari yun? Ang Sa psychology, ang paliwanag doon ay Dunning-Kruger effect. Uh, cognitive bias or mistake in reasoning when people misjudge the level of their knowledge or skills. Ngayon, bakit kasi nimula ng pay ang presentation ko nito? Because this is an example of uh, organizing your thoughts no, in writing your paper. When you start to write out your paper, like how Dr. Tapia mentioned earlier, discussed it earlier, we start with the gem of an idea and then we pursue it. And then when we, how do we pursue? It's really by identifying the concepts which are important to us and then linking them to each other. So yun yung topic of today. So my outline, I have five parts. Medyo uh, mabilisan ito dahil uh, I'm trying to compress a whole semester into one brief presentation today. So let me start with the research process. So this is the general uh, outline of research. Now whatever uh, discipline or whatever a project, whether it's academic or uh, applied, we start with conceptualization and implementation. And essentially, these are also the parts of your uh, thesis or dissertation. You start with a topic and then the review of the latest literature, your problem objectives, your framework, your methodology, and then you implement the study. You have the results and then implications and recommendations. So let me highlight some of the items here. When you go uh, de in determining your topic, you really need your review of the latest literature. That's why the uh, presentation by Dr. Agu uh, Aguilar, Early, Ag uh, Aguilar Early was very important. No? And let me just summarize. Uh, important you take note of the findings, the recommendations of previous study. Sometimes we tend to focus only on the findings and not so much on the recommendations, but it is in the recommendations where uh, previous scholars actually say uh, what needs to be done next. At the same time, theories. Uh, Filipino papers tend to not get accepted uh, for publication because they are theoret e theoretical or mahina in theoretical substance. That's why we really need to strengthen the theoretical framework and we build on this through the related literature. And finally, you also look at the previous methods that have been done. What is known, what is unknown, how does my research address the gap between the known and the unknown in these four levels, not necessarily all four, but you know, 
whether in terms of the theories or methods or the topics, then dapat malinaw ano, what we are trying to address. And then, based on the findings and recommendations from the previous studies, you state your research problem and objectives. So, makita niyo yung flow no, from topic to research problem objectives via the RRL. Ngayon, how do you phrase your uh, research problem and objectives? Doon naman pupunta yung inyong study framework. And this study framework is based on your theories. So, let me go to that second part. No? The research problem objectives and the study framework, how do they align to each other? And I'm using as a case a problem on how do... How can we make people use a new mobile app for cost registration? So, halimbawa, there's a technology that you want to introduce, and then how you make, how can you make people use it? So, ito. Uh, so, you have the research question, and then you have the objective. Saan manggagaling ito? Dito, papasok yung framework. So, for instance, based on your review of the related literature, you find this model, the technology adoption model by Davis in 1989. Of course, you have to cite this properly. At sabi dito, for... Uh, us to actually make people use a technology, the rightmost box, merong proseso na dapat pagdaanan na or we have to anticipate. So guided by this framework, then we have our research question and objectives. Paano yun? Ang kabuan, ang suma total ng framework na ito, what factors determine the use of the new mobile registration app among UP students? Halimbawa, I'm doing this uh, in UP, ano? So kasi yung dulo, yung actual system use, di ba yun yung pinaka-ultimate goal? And then all the five boxes to it are the factors. So you can see how the question actually already encapsulates the framework and the other way around. Ngayon, saan mga gagaling objectives? The objectives are, compo are dimensions of the question. So first, to identify the demographics, tectographics, and psychographics of the students. Yun yung first nakita niyo, red box doon sa aking diagram. And then second, to determine how UP students perceive the ease of use and usefulness of the new mobile app. That's the second box naman naka-highlight ngayon. Third, to determine their attitude towards an intent to use the new app. And finally, to determine the relationship among perceived ease of use, uh, perceived usefulness and attitude towards as well as intent to use uh, the new app. You can see, if I go back and forth, there's a tight link between the research problem and objectives as well as the framework. So dun pa lang, naka, kumbaga, inayos na ninyo ang inyong research uh, problem. Ulit, itong framework na napili na ito ay base sa literature. So pag mamaya, papapaliwanag ko na when you write your uh, results and uh, discussion, kadutong na ulit automatically ng framework ninyo ito. So that is where you start, you know, making sure everything coheres. So just uh, um, research objectives focus the study, prevent the collection of data not strictly necessary, and organizing the study in clearly defined parts and phases. So kita ninyo, dahil malinaw, no, ito yung framework ko, ito yung research problem objectives ko, wala na kayo ibang pag-aaralan pa, wala na ibang pwedeng sumali dyan. Yan na yung gagawin ninyo. And then the questions are specific. Measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Remember, thesis and dissertations have to be written within a specific time uh, period. Kaya kailangan ginamadwit ninyo agad. Ano? Kaya the objectives, to begin with, must satisfy these criteria for objectives. Alam ko medyo mabilis, ha? so pakinggan pa no? na lang ulit ninyo yung recording mamaya sa YouTube. So, uh, anong pa yung mga checklist? Uh, Sa social science kasi may paradigm na sabi no na quantitative or qualitative kaya sa amin mahalaga yon na the questions must align with our paradigm but maybe for ERDT not so much uh, but you can ask later if that's important for you and then the prob objectives align with the problem that the components which are the objectives actually equal to the problem dapat ganun yun ano may doon silang direct relationship to each other and then dapat uh, the key variables or factors are in the objectives. Kung ano yung nasa framework, dapat may objective. Kung ano yung nasa objective, dapat nasa framework. And then the objectives are substantive or thematic, not procedural. Ano ibig sabihin ng procedural objectives? To interview 100 people, to, uh, to survey uh, 1,000 respondents, 
hindi yun, ob, hindi yun substantive objectives. Those are procedural objectives. These are the things that you need to do in order to address your problem. So ta ulit, thematic or substantive, not procedural. Uh, and dito mayroong magandang link para sa mga objective, uh, objective verbs. Ngayon, mamaya, when you, dahil nga mabilis itong hinagawa ko, uh, balikan ninyo itong video na to and then try, I have an exercise here, the theory of recent action, at try ninyo yung ginawa ko ngayon, ano, based, based on this framework, uh, try to define the research problem and objectives for this topic. Yan, may homework kayo. Ngayon, tuloy-tuloy, ano, balikan kayo yung research process. So, nagawa nyo na yan, meron na kayo hanggang study framework. Punta na kayo sa methodology. So again, nakita ninyo, the methodology has to be connected to the literature uh, about that particular topic in terms of methods. So, ang tawag dito ay leading towards operationalization, still using the case no, of using yung mobile app for course registration. So may, paano ba hinihimay ang framework? These are just broad strokes. Of course, there, there may be disciplinal differences, but uh, typically may theoretical, conceptual, operational, and analytical levels. And it really helps us think through the problem. So I'll explain how it works. So balikan natin yung RPO natin kanina at yung model na ginagamit natin. This is very simplistic. I know you can do better, but for restrictive purposes, I think this uh, works for our uh, goal today. So ano yung sa theoretical level? So halimbawa, merong theory 1, may theory 2. Gusto ninyong pagdutungin. So kung gusto ninyong gawin yun, kailangan mahanap ninyo yun sa literature. And then, pagkata sa thinking process ninyo, no? sasabihin ninyo, uh, yung research problem ko, at saka yung framework na ito, meron ba silang shared arguments? How, si how similarly are their concepts? At ano naman yung parts where they diverge from each other? Or kung mayroon ba silang limitations in order to capture what I want to study? Which means maybe I need to add another theory. So alimbawa, ulit ito, sabi ko, ah, sige, may, may technology adapt acceptance model ako ni Davis. Kasi yung research ko at yung TAM, uh, pareho about system use and meron siyang process yung sinusundan na linear flow from uh, perceptions, attitude, behavior, intention to actual system use. And then ako, sabihin ko, in this study, I also argue for such a sequential series. However, yung TAM focuses on technology itself. Pero yung gusto kong pag-aaral ay affordances, which are an attribute of technology rather than the technology itself. Kaya ngayon, kukunin ko yung ideas ni Gibson uh, from his theory of affordances. So may figure 1 ako dito, yung pinakita ko na kanina. And then I have figure 2, ito naman yung magagaling kay Gibson na affordances, understanding or conceptualization of usefulness and ease of use. Ngayon, pag integrate ko sila, that will be my integrated theoretical model. I know some of you have questions. What's the difference between an MA and a PhD? Uh, especially for a PhD, it's knowledge building. Kaya itong integration of uh, existing frameworks or theories to uh, foster new models, ito yung mahalaga, no? especially for us in the social sciences in a dissertation. So kumbaga, ito na. The integrated theoretical model will be the student's contribution to the discipline. Kasi pinagdudugtong na niya yung dalawang theories. No? Ngayon, punta na ako sa conceptual level. Napagdugtong na at napaniwala yung mga tao na dapat natamay pagdudugtong ng mga framework. Now let me go to the conceptual level. This is where you apply your integrated framework into the constructs. Or ibig sabihin, how it actually informs your own study. How the model informs your own study. So yan. Makita ninyo, from the left box, di ba nakalagay dyan, external variables. Hinimay na yung external variables to mean demographics, psychographics, and technographics. Marami pang graphics, graphics na pwedeng isama. Pero for the purpose of this study, itong tatlo lang na demo, psycho, technographics ang isa sa, ang, uh, based on the literature, sila yung pinakamahalaga, kaya sila yung kasama ngayon. And then, dun sa affordances, hindi na siya generic na perceived usefulness. Pero, dun na siya sa of the app, 
So it's specific to the app na. And consequently, dun sa attitude, intent, etc., tungkol na dun sa app itself. So yun yung conceptual model. It's the application of the theory to your study. Ngayon, sa operational level, ito na yung measures. Paano ba talaga susukate ng pag-aaralan yung mga items na nandito sa conceptual model? So halimbawa, in demographics, say sex, age, and income. Yun lang. Marami pang pwedeng demographic variables like uh, height, weight, mga ganyan. Ano? Pero for this particular instance, hindi sila mahalaga. So if a focus mo lang yung study mo, in this case, some demographics into three variables. And then meron ka pang psychographics and technographics. Dapat himay din yun. And then sa affordances, himay din yan. So yung perceived ease of use will be in terms of downloading or navigating. Yung perceived usefulness will be about performance expectancy. And then yung attitude, so on and so forth. Kumbaga, yung uh, application is then parsed or hinimay na dito sa operational level. Ngayon, balikan ninyo yung related literature because you don't have to reinvent the wheel. A lot of the concepts out there already have existing measures. Then, you know, that also demonstrates how well you have done your related literature. Because in this case, there are many scales that can be used for usefulness and ease of use because uh, these models are, have been in existence for decades now. But remember, you have to cite correctly, and some of the scales are for pay, which means that you have to pay you know, for every item, uh, for every time that you're going to use that instrument. So halimbawa, if you have 200 respondents, ibig sabihin kung halimbawa 5 pesos yan or 50 pesos per item uh, per use times 200 respondents. May mga ganyan, especially sa psychology. Ano? Uh, you have to pay. But otherwise, if you know, it's not for pay, then make sure that you cite correctly. Ngayon, uh, hindi pa tapos. Kailangan, uh, you have to establish the relationships. No? Ibig sabihin, hypothesis. Diba? You have arguments, but you have to be transparent. Na these are the hypotheses I want to test. Uh, mahalaga ito because we cannot be doing what is known as modeling after the fact. Yung modeling after the fact, yung walang predefined hypothesis, tapos titignan na lang kung sino yung significant sa dulo. And then yung gagawa ng model. Uh, that is really frowned upon in many instances considered as unethical. That, kumbaga, you're searching for significant relationships, whereas you didn't as, uh, define those relationships to be significant to begin with. So may ganung ano ha, uh, mahalagang paalala. Now, when we do the framework, nakalagay doon yung relationships that we want to determine to be significant or not. If these are determined to be not significant, the reality is your chances of getting published will be lower. Kasi sabihin, mali yung basa mo sa literature, mali yung paggagawa mo ng yung uh, method, etc. Et Kung baga, the onus is on you on the researcher to have failed because see, what you initially said would be significant turned out not to be significant. Ngayon, yung iba gagawin, I know some people do this, they will run new tests no? without saying the original, without indicating the original model. That is really uh, frowned upon, uh, yung modeling after the fact na sinasabi. Kasi nga, kailangan maayos yung pagbasa mo ng literature, maayos yung pag-framework mo, maayos yung pag-statement hypothesis, and then you implement the research accordingly. Okay. Bakit ba? Uh, napakahalaga nitong framework building. Sabi ko nga kanina, uh, dito in, this is where you establish diba, the coherence between your research problem and objectives and your variables and your connection to the literature. Pero beyond the scope of, your, of this current project, of your current thesis and dissertation, remember that you know, academic life is a marathon, hindi yan sprint, hindi yan pagkatas ng dissertation or thesis, tapos na no, ang karera ninyo. Uh, this is a lifelong process. That's why, halimbawa may ganitong model, kumbaga nagpapasubali na kayo, in the future, you will be pursuing that topic. So in this case, in the work of Davies, you know, they had a model, uh, two version of it. So uh, Venkatesh short 
uh, with Davis in 2000, and then Hinimay nila yung perceived usefulness. And then in 2000, and they, uh, in a subsequent study, Hinimay naman nila yung perceived ease of use. And then eventually they came up four years later with a unified theory of acceptance and use of technology. At ito, mas himay na, no, na uh, yung, if you look at uh, the second iteration of it, sa perceived usefulness, nandun na yung voluntariness, etc. And then yun yung lalabas dito ngayon. So, kumbaga, uh, that is how we build knowledge. That's how we contribute to discipline. That's how we evolve from models to theories because, you know, uh, we are able to confirm the different relationships between and among variables. So, yeah. So, kung kita ninyo from the thesis, kung baga mga anak pa yan, uh, yun dapat yung research ninyo. Ayan. So, <laughs> mabilis talaga ito. Pero, summarizing, no, and moving forward. Para ma-klaro ma talaga sa isip ninyo, no, paano ba nagdudug ng dugtong? How do these things connect to each other? So, again, familiarize yourself with the key concepts ng TAM, no? because that is the example that I showed earlier. For you, these concepts may be different, will probably be different. No? Ang mahalaga lang, ipilan ninyo sila dyan, and then how do you check for coherence? So these concepts, check. Are you introducing these concepts in the first chapter? You are, are you arguing for the significance uh, of each concept and their relationship to each other? Pwedeng bang baseline data, historical context, or anecdotes, or quotes? And then, uh, in the related literature, uh, are you saying the findings? Are you stating the findings, implications, and recommendations from previous research about these concepts? So framework ninyo, are the theories encapsulating these concepts? Doing some methodology, are there enough measures for each of these concepts? And then are you discussing these concepts? And then are you giving implications and recommendations to these concepts? Kita nyo kumbaga, the items on the left-hand side, the concepts remain static, even across the different sections. Walang ano to, dagdag bawas, no? So isa, balikan natin yung research process kung saan ako nagsimula kanina. So results, yung analysis is a straightforward running of your tests, no? uh, presentation of the findings essentially. But now, there is an additional layer and ito kumbaga MA and uh, dissertation, usually for, under, for undergraduate because their life sphere, their world of experience is limited, uh, parang okay na yung uh, analysis part. But for MA and PhD, malalim yung hinihingi natin sa interpretation. And that means linking your findings back to uh, ay, your interpretation links back to your findings, recommendations, theories, and methods. Kung baga binabalik ninyo, no? it's not enough just to present the data but to create a story about your, about your data as the data relate to the literature. Pagkatapos nun, may implications recommendations kung saan Sabi niyo yung practical recommendations about the topic, yung theoretical implications, ibig sabihin, ano yung dinagdag din sa framework, no? And then sa methodolog methodological, did you introduce new scale, a new scale, uh, were the previous scales useful, or if there were positives or kakulangan, how did you enrich those uh, scales, halimbawa? Did you uh, innovate on methods? Uh, to apply this to the local context, alimbawa, kasama rin yun. So, ito yung RRL, no? Nasa lahat siya. Kanina, tama na sanabi ni Dr. Aguila kanina. Nasa lahat ng uh, parts of the paper, no? Yung RRL. At sa introduction, it uh, helps, no? The research problem, kanagtong ng objectives na pinaliwanag ko kanina. And then yung study framework, katulad na pinakita ko, nakadotong yan sa objectives. And then yung uh, concepts and their relationships, yun yung CNR, concepts and relationships, kadugtong yan ng study framework as I demonstrated. 
Yan. And then, sa methodology, pag gumawa ka ng instrument, pabalikan ninyo yung concepts and relationships. Diba? Kung ano yung nandun sa framework na concept, dapat may katumbas na uh, item sa inyong instrument. And then, pagdating sa analysis, may findings. No? At make sure na your outline also follows your uh, objectives 1, 2, and 3. Yan. Kita nyo nakapila sila. And then sa discussion, across findings naman, how do they connect to each other? Remember, it's not just about concepts, but also relationships between concepts. So you just don't uh, discuss findings on their own, but how findings connect to each other. And then sa summary and conclusion, again, balik, bawat objective, must, there must be a summary. And then yung conclusion, I Diba, pag pinagdutundong nyo yung summarized findings, ano yung uh, kabuuan na sagot? And that should answer your research problem. And then sa dulo, balik sa theoretical, methodological, and practical recommendations. Yun. Uh, ang mabilis ang uh, pagkapaliwanag ng how you organize your chapters and ensuring thought position. So kung may tanong kayo, uh, let's answer during the open forum. So maraming salamat sa inyong lahat sa pakikinig. Thank you very much, Dr. Paragas, for a very comprehensive discussion, presentation. And I think our, our participant needs to, to uh, go back to the recording kasi medyo comprehensive talaga. And uh, may assignment na kaagad yung ating mga participants. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Paragas. So now we will proceed to our open forum to be facilitated by uh, Dr. Lawrence Bello. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, go yes, ahead. So I'm Lawrence Bello, professor of chemical engineering at De La Salle University. I'll be the one moderating the Q&A. So as of now, actually, there are a lot of questions, but then uh, so, siguro, let's start with the first one in our Q&A box. So the first question would be, um, what would be the word count requirement in writing our dissertation? Um, anyone can answer? Any of our panelists? Um, I can start. Um, well, for the for a dissertation, um, usually um, our audience for um, for say an, a scholarly work that is uh, presented in in, in in a department or in a yeah in a department is uh, let's say you are um, a PhD in chemical engineering so uh, for uh, for a uh, dissertation or thesis your main audience are chemical engineering students uh, so the level of detail that you might want to put into your dissertation or your thesis is uh, um um is based on um, something that um, a chemical and uh, uh, a chemical engineer can um, can understand when um, he or she reads the whole document. Uh, typically, a publication is around six thousand to eight thousand words. A good number for uh, for the word count for a thesis or dissertation is uh, somewhat um, say um, ten to fifteen thousand. Um, if you um, or something twice of that that of a um, a typical publication because you want to capture uh, the details that um, uh, the, uh, for those students uh, that are uh, that do not um, focus on the, the kind of study that you are doing but on the same program as you are. Thank you very much for that. Dr. Fred, um, our other uh, speakers, Dr. Paragas, Dr. Aguila, would you have any um, thing to share on that? Uh, for me, uh, I don't think, from my experience, I don't recall that we have a certain number of words in the dissertation per se, but in the abstract, that's a different matter. Uh, the abstract is usually short. So there's a certain number that we follow. And then, uh, because sometimes in the dissertation, you actually put in everything. Uh, it is not uh, the way that I was asked to write it and when I wrote it, uh, it is not the same as a journal article because the journal article, although it is a full article, it's still comprehensive as to uh, what I have written in my dissertation uh, 
manuscript. So it's a lot longer than uh, uh, the chapter that is uh, for a full paper or something. So yeah. I, I don't Maybe. think we have a, uh, a limit. A certain number, that. right? Maybe I, I could uh, change the question a bit for the benefit of everyone. How many chapters, I think, and you know how, what should be placed in the appendices and what should be included in the main text? Siguro mas magandang question natin yun. Dr. Paragas, could you have anything to say on that? Yeah, so for instance, uh, I know a lot of you are doing MA and thesis, uh, and MA thesis and PhD dissertations. So for us, uh, so MA typically uh, is just one long results and discussion chapter for the thesis. And again, the sections of the chapter relate to the research problem and objectives. But for dissertation, uh, typically for us in the social sciences, this would be one chapter for each objective. Kumbaga, malalim na talaga yung discussion. Uh, kaya nga, uh, I'm not sure about your own discipline, but for instance, for us, uh, yung sa CHED, uh, we are now required uh, to have derivative works no, from the uh, thesis or dissertation. Kasi nga, very few people would read a voluminous thesis or dissertation kasi mahaba yun. So, uh, ang requirement ngayon ng CHED is for a, a, a graduate to produce a chapter, uh, a journal article, no? Na parang the condensed version. Doon napapasok yun, the 25-page manuscript, di ba? Na based for, on the dissertation. Uh, kaya ganun yung kumbaga kalakaran namin ngayon sa uh, communication and social sciences. Yes. Um, any other inputs before we proceed to the next question? Um, yes, in my experience, so I have... Uh, the first chapter is generally the overall uh, literature review. So I have one chapter for that. And each succeeding chapter depends on the subtopic that I work on for my uh, PhD. So although we have a huge topic and then each somewhat experiment, so it can be subdivided into several yeah. collection of experiment. And I design it in such a way that I can construct the best fit story the most interesting story that I have for them. Yes. Yes, Paul. Um, Dr. Fred? Um, well, um, for, uh, for, the, for the question of whether uh, what kind of um, information we should put on the, um, on the body of the dissertation and what to put on the, uh, on the appendices, um, I would say that um, it, it depends on the, the, on the kind of or or the, the significance of a particular detail um, to your research. For instance, I would say, let's say you have a, uh, for example, in a study for uh, land suitability analysis in uh, using geographic information system. You might, um, if if your result mainly focuses on the suitability maps or or uh, or a map of showing the suitability scores for a specific crop, then you might just want to present that because it has a, uh, it has a lot of important or major details that would answer your objectives in the thesis. So and and you may you might not want go into the detail of how you want. Uh, how you convert the climate data into specific suitability score. And so that kind of uh, detail can be put into the appendix. So it's, it, it depends on the, ano, um, the level of um, significance or importance of a specific detail. All right. Keep up. So again, maybe we can go to the next question. Um, another question is, how can we differentiate the thesis topic of a BS, MS, or MA, and PhD degrees. Can you give examples? Thank you. Who might want? Uh, who would be answering that? Okay, let me let me answer. No, for just it also depends on the uh, out. Because now, the we have learning uh, outcomes now. We are OBE based. Yes. Paul. So typically, for the different levels for Bachelor of Arts, it's really uh, more straightforward application. The uh, skills, because you know, we teach skills for the undergraduate level. So what we need to see in the student's thesis is the demonstration of the ability to implement research. Ganun, ganun lakas straightforward. And then for MA, yan na yung mas ability to theorize. Not to create new knowledge, not to create new models, but to uh, demonstrate ability to build a framework, ganyan. Ano? Uh, but mainly derivative. Pero sa PhD, yan na yung foregrounding. 
uh, a new area or uh, taking leadership position on a certain topic. Uh, kung baga kaya mahalaga yung theory building component, yun yung kung baga, may, uh, the main contribution is the conceptual contribution. Uh, dun sa undergrad kasi, that's really practical implications. Eh. And then sa uh, MA, it's really demonstrate ability to think in demonstration. Ano? And then sa DLO, it's ability to generate knowledge. That's well for, that's for us in the social sciences. I think it's true then, Doc, for everyone. Kasi diba, mm-hmm. like, I mean, for me, from engineering, um, proof of basic research is for undergraduate. Yeah. Improvement or derivative of the research is for the masters and mm-hmm. new knowledge is for the PhD. Yeah. So it's true for all, I think. So um, another question po here, how can we reduce the risk of overlooking relevant intervening or confounding not variable in the study framework when researchers cannot entirely review the research efforts done relevant to the research problem. Nahilo ko doon. Ah, wait lang. Ulitin ko po. <laughs> Sir, baka ang I mean, ano, ang, pwede lang, hindi naman talaga magagawa lahat, di ba? Okay. Yun yung idea. Na lahat, maraming confounding, maraming okay. uh, independent, dependent variables na hindi naman talaga makocover. Yes. Ang mahalaga lang that your argument is solid, no? that for the purposes of this paper, this is your argument and that you are able to cover uh, that uh, topic comprehensively. Pwede sa presentation nga Dr. Aguila, doon papasok yung literature ninyo, no? yes. that you have to demonstrate na so long, in terms of your argument, kumpleto yung RL ninyo. Opo. So, I think doon na nga po talaga, no? po. para, ah yes po, Dr. Aguila, yes po. Ah, okay, I think it's the same as well with us in the sciences. Uh, hindi mo talaga pwedeng ma-cover lahat. Kaya nga, I think you need to define the limitations of your study. Yes. So that's one thing that you need to uh, come up with your advisor na ito yung gagawin ito. So dapat meron kayong limitations. Scope ng project. Yes po. Ah, ito po. Um, can I add one question po na not, not in here? Pero I think this is a good question kasi ito yung laging tanong eh. Um, how would you know if you're PhD dissertation is enough for a PhD. Kasi naalala ko, tinanong ko rin yan nung nagdo-doctorate po ako sa Australia. And then, parang may isang, uh, sige po, yun po yung muna yung tanong ko sa inyong tatlo. Ayan. Okay. Ah, sige, sige, Dr. Aguila. Dr. So for me, kasi yung uh, based on experience, yung transitioning ng how I think about the research. So first off, although of course PhD na yon, but most of the things that I do, I still consult with my advisor, with my advisory committee. But then I, I believe I progress later on and then I come to think of what's the next step on my own. So I just tell it to my advisor, I want to do this or I don't want to do this anymore because I already like, I can support this with another experiment. So that way of progress in your way of thinking, uh, so some of the notes that you're ready or you're ready to really have a, an independent research or you can do an independent research later on. Yes, I agree. Yun talaga yun eh, na uh, kung baga, kung meron, diba, essentially when uh, doing research, you're trying to connect to, to at least uh, two ideas. Ngayon, kung if those two concepts have been linked beforehand, o di hindi na yun, kumbaga, uh, original idea, kumbaga, na-explore na, 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 na yun. Pero pwedeng exploratory pa lang yun, hindi pa kosal. So di ba meron namang different le- uh, layers of objectives? Ngayon, kumbaga, ilulocate mo yung sarili mo, di ba? Meron nang isang topic ng maraming literature, pero puro descriptive pa lang. Hindi pa siya, wala pang causal arguments. Ngayon, yung causation or causality, kung anong level ang handa na yung topic, yun yung magiging contribution mo. Kung baga, it's really familiarity with the terrain, with the literature, para masabi mong, ah, puro descriptive pa lang, so kailangan kong i-level up yung topic. That will be my contribution. Or pwede namang uh, may dalawa na mature topics, pero hindi pa pinagdudugtong. Ako yung magdudugtong noon. So yun yung kumbaga, yung sinasabi natin na 
uh, knowledge building. Hindi naman ito para magsisimula kayo ng bagong pang Nobel Prize na, <laughs> na idea. No? Kasi hindi naman, hindi naman tayo ganun. Ang knowledge building is incremental. Di ba? Paunti-unti naman. Hindi po worth it new, new knowledge. Eh, gaga mag-invento kayo yung bagong discipline. Hindi naman siya ganun. Baka matakot kayong lahat. Um, to add to that, um, it's actually when, uh, no, when, when they say that you are ready to, uh, to get a PhD degree, it's more of uh, just like what I've said in my presentation, something wherein you are, uh, no, um, you are better on a specific topic or on the on the thing or the the topic that you're working on your PhD. You're better in that in that aspect than your mentor. You, uh, that's that's something that my mentor actually mentioned. Tell me that um, I, I'm 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 quite ready to I know, to to I'm ready to um uh, earn my PhD degree because I I'm better than him in that kind of ano, um in that in, in that topic. So that's one of the indicators that um, um I learned uh, when uh, when uh, about whether you are ready or not. All right. Uh, may isang question din dito. Sorry po yung ibang questions. I tend to skip na lang din po kasi parang I think na-answer siya as we go along. Pero ito po, magandang question. Um, may I know, is there a process how to find a certain mentor for an area of study that I want to pursue? So I think ang magandang question nga po dito is paano mo alaman kung best suited ka dun sa mentor na yun or not? Yun po siguro. Your <laughs> mentorship. So, uh, how do you find your mentor? Actually, it's yes. really engagement. Ano, no? Engage, ang tawag doon ay engagement in the field. Uh, kasi, siguro mahalaga din na yung engagement natin, hindi lang pag mag-dissertation na tayo. Ang sabi nga, di ba, when actually the dissertation, you prepare for it for a long uh, time. Uh, especially if you're applying for a grant. Uh, ako ay, for instance, sit in Fulbright or in uh, some other child applications. Makita dapat talaga yung Kumbaga, how someone's life has been planned. <laughs> na yung the previous work contributes to the next level and then merong pupututunguhan. Uh, kaya ka ako, kung ganun, and the question is about finding your mentor, it's really your immersion in the field. Kilala mo kung sino yung pinakabagay sa'yo na uh, mentor no, professionally because that person has been doing that, is a, is a leader in that field. Uh, having said that, meron din naman kaya tawag na parang X factor no, na uh, may ad- mag aptitude and attitude. May mamiking chemistry ng professor kasi kahit na pareho, di ba, pareho ka ng pinag-aaralan pero talagang kung hindi naman magtugma ang inyong pananaw sa buhay ay hindi ka matatapos mag-dissertation. Yeah. Um, let me just um, share with ano, um, my thoughts on on that particular aspect. Normally, um, um, a department or a college in, in a university provides um, some um, ways or um, avenue for um, for the, for the graduate for new graduate students to to find their topic but um, if the the um, the uh, very minimal um, way of uh, um, of doing or finding a mentor is actually um, I'm sure that universities have a a list of their faculties um and of of their faculties um or faculty members so you might um um one way is to um um, um find their or uh, look for their uh, for their names in in scopus for their publications and see the, the 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 trend or the the kind of research that they are doing and if there's some um there if there's some um, topic or research that uh, interests you, you might want to consult uh, with them. So that's what that's one of the methods that I know about. Um, how how can you find the method? It's more about, it's more really about um um having a topic and being interested in that particular topic, and then consulting with the mentor. So that is also same as with uh, Institute of Chemistry. So we organize a sort of orientation for the graduate students who are in each faculty uh, who can advise graduate students present a very short, uh, maybe two to three slides overall, or overview of the research. And then the student can set up a uh, one-on-one interview with the faculty. Ideally, 
I would have wanted also to have a partial stay of the students so that say uh, they know how we run or I run the research group. So attend the uh, research group meetings or do a little bit of experiment in the laboratory. But uh, during this time, especially in the pandemic, that cannot be done anymore. So it is more of in the interview. So matching of interest and principle, just like uh, what they said. Thank you, Paul. Actually, yun na nga talaga eh, no? Matching of interest. At saka, sabi nga ni Dr. Paragas, kung magkakasundo talaga kayo, magkakasundo talaga. Pero yun na nga po, di ba? I think um, for everyone's uh, interest, I think marami naman sa bawat university may mga faculty profile tayo, faculty portfolio, na nakalagay din yung mga research interests, tapos nakalagay mga past or present researches, and then if they are looking for some research assistance, where they can apply to. Siguro yun yung mga isang um, point na pwede silang mag-take off from. And ito, I think, um, the question is more on ethics here. Um, may I ask the opinions of the panelists? Can I know what the speaker's opinions are on students and researchers without direct access from paid journal articles resorting to websites such as Sci-Hub and similar sites? So, any reactions? Ano po ulit yun? <laughs> um, ano po, yung mga walang direct access sa paid journal articles na um, institutes or institutions, um, ano ang comment natin on their accessing Sci-Hub or other similar sites? Ah, Opo, uh, ito ang uh, sinasagot ko palagi. No? You can write the authors directly. At uh, author, uh, scientists, authors are generally uh, generous no? uh, because they also want to be cited. They also are interested in learning who are you know, the other scholars doing their similar work in other countries. So wag po tayo may hiya, no? but of course be polite, explain your circumstances, and request for a copy of their article. And you know, uh, kung matuwa talaga sila sa inyo, baka yan pa yung opening for potential collaboration in the future. Yes, I strongly agree with that. And at the same time, I, I think UP also has this already. Uh, you can do it via the library. So you will request it from the library and the library will request it from uh, somewhere where it is available. So I personally, I have not done that yet here in UPLB, but I've done that before in my PhD work and I can access uh, journal articles from different uh, libraries as long as they are part of a certain uh, group or something. Um, yeah, to add to that, um, actually there are... Well, that not um. There are, uh, I believe in 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 the LSU there are high school students who, uh, um, write a request for uh, the, um, for library access. So, um, I think there are some universities who have um journal subscription. Um, um, there are libraries that are approachable when it comes to that kind of matter. Yeah. So in Apo. Ako rin kasi, just like a Dr. Aguila, for my experience then, um, I request from the library and then my university request from other consortium universities. And sabi ni Dr. Paragas, very, very generous talaga kasi I tend to write then. And then at times, naging collaborator ko pa yung isa na author from another big university. So yun nga. Um, I think we have room for one more question po. Tapos yung ibang questions po siguro, uh, what we can do po is we will collate the questions and then yung answers naman po, we can answer them and maybe um, the ERDT team could share this with the public. So yung isang question, to follow up on the mentor question, pwede po bang matulungan or magpatulong sa future mentor or advisor if we are applying to ERDT scholarship? Since it requires research proposal in application, or should we construct proposal by ourselves? Thank you. Because I'm not an ERDT, so maybe that you may answer this one. Okay. Um, um, to answer to that uh, that question, it's actually um, um, as um, 
uh, as a mentor and as a student of a ano, or as a leader in this scholar uh, previously. I think um, the, the mentors are really encouraging students to um, uh, to apply for um, for uh, for for ERDT scholarship because it's um, the ERDT scholarship actually provides um, funds for uh, for research dissemination um, equipment uh, etc. So it's actually a a big help for the mentor uh, to uh, to to save time when it comes to finding uh, funding for the for the for the graduate uh, for the graduate students. So. Uh, since it requires proposals in application yeah um yeah it's um uh, mentors are really encouraging um, the graduate students to apply for ERD the scholarship so i i am not an ERD uh, scholar but i think for me i would uh, gladly help out a student who is uh, writing an, a proposal but the, the main topic will still come from the student. So I will uh, uh, incorporate my ideas, but the bulk of it should really come from the student. I think uh, uh, the case will not be just isolated for me. I think many uh, potential advisors are also willing to help out uh, students uh, for that uh, proposal. Okay, thank you, Dr. Question and answer, Doc RC. Do you have um, yes. some thank words? You. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Aguila, Dr. Paragas, and uh, Dr. Tabe, and of course, our moderator, uh, Dr. Bello. Uh, before we proceed with the th synthesis of Dr. Bello, uh, can we have a photo up first with our, uh, with our participants? Okay. So our technical team will take the Screenshot. Hello, Paul. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, it's already noon. Good afternoon, everyone. So we'll be taking a group photo. All right, everybody smile in three, two, one. Have one more, Paul. Three, two, one. All right. There you go, Sir RC. Thank you so much, Dr. Tapia, Dr. Aguila, and Dr. Paragas. We are really happy that you have, you've accepted our invitation and we're really happy to see you here today. Thank you, Pop. Thank you very much. So maybe later this afternoon session, we will be having the photo op for everyone. Okay? So ngayon mga yeah. ano lang, uh, nasa technical panel. Okay? Nasa mga panelists. <laughs> okay, Dr. Uh, Dr. Bello, you can have your... Yeah, so, yeah, so, konti lang to. Again, thank you very much to all the speakers, Dr. Frederick Tapia, for sharing with us the contents of a good thesis and dissertation, Dr. May Joan Aguila for her insights on how to effectively synthesize and assess literature, not just a summary, but a synthesis and a good assessment. And she's also correct that all through our, our writing, in every stage of the process, we do literature review. Dr. Fernando Paragas, for his wisdom on how chapters should be organized, what should be the contents and what keywords, key phrases and frameworks to be used, and what to do and what not to do in writing your chapters. So, so that um, we'll have a, a cohesive way of writing our thesis and dissertation. So with that, I think again, the speakers, the moderators and the attendees. So we'll see you all in the afternoon session. Dr. RC, thank you. Yes, uh, Dr. Lores, maraming salamat. So we will be having our lunch break. So we will have our afternoon session at two o'clock this afternoon. So you can uh, come back to uh, our uh, event at 2 p.m. So enjoy your lunch and uh, see you uh, see you all again later. Thank you. Thank you so much, Poolet. Thank you, Sir RC. Thank you, Sir Lawrence. Thank you to our speakers. Thank you, everyone. See you all again.